Today we're going to go through all of the components of this 80% efficiency gas furnace. So starting with, we have our filter base down here. What I love about these filter bases is that the standard size filter will fit in here. In this case, this is a 16 by 25 by 1, or you could actually remove these little adapters and use a 2 inch filter. There's many different styles and sizes of these filters that you can apply to this bottom, but every single fill furnace really should have some kind of an external filter base. This is our return air, so the blower is going to be pulling air from the house. So behind here is going to be our blower compartment. So if we turn it to the side, you can see this is our blower motor. So all this is going to be negative pressure, return air. So it's sucking or pulling the air through the filter from the house to this point here. Once this motor turns, it pulls the air in here and then it pressurizes it. So it's going to be positive pressure air here. This is going to be our furnace side. This is our heat exchanger. And the front side of this, this is where all of our components are going to be for, the, for igniting the gas, uh, all of those pieces. And then this is where the flames are going to be burning inside of these tubes. And the air from the house is going to be outside the tubes. This is called the heat exchanger. It's going to keep the flames separate from the air of the house while also exchanging the heat from the gases to the heat in the air. So it keeps them separate. So we move the air across this heat exchanger. And then here we go through this. This is going to be our evaporator coil. So in the summertime, we're going to be using this evaporator coil to absorb heat out of the air. In other words, cool it. In the wintertime, we're going to use this component that heats the air. It adds heat to the air. So we're only going to be using one of the other, but the air is always moving past, moving past it. In the wintertime, we're going to be moving air through here, heating it, and it just goes past and through our evaporator coil like it's not even there. And the summertime, the air moves through this heat exchanger like it's not even there, and we take the heat out of the air with this evaporator coil. Now up here at the very, very top, we have what we call a canvas connector. This is an external accessor that we use. This allows us to install this system to an existing ductwork or uh, our transition. When you put this in a closet, space. So this allows us to slide the unit in, then we can lift this up with S and drive cleats, which we'll go over in another video later, and it allows us to install that system and have much more room. Now this also needs to be insulated when we're done to make sure this doesn't have any condensation in the summertime. So let's get started with this gas furnace. I'm going to start off just by removing the evaporator box from it. And the evaporator is already gone. Our suction pipe would be here, a liquid pipe there, but we're just going to remove this out of the way. I've already loosened the silicone that was holding it down, so we just put this out of the way so we don't have to worry about it. Now we can get a better look at our gas furnace. We're going to pop this top door off. Notice that this door has these louvers on it. This is where we need combustion air for our flames to burn. So this door has the louvers where this door is sealed. We want to keep the combustion air, the air we're using for the fire, completely separate from the air that's going through the house. In any gas furnace, whether it's a closet or in a basement, you have to have upper and lower pipes that brings in air from outside or the attic, so that air is allowed to burn. It's very important to have that air. I've seen customers before uh, that had a system installed and then they didn't know what those pipes were. They covered the pipes up to keep the air from outside coming in, and what happens is this furnace has nowhere to get air. It's trying to get air through, and that actually caused an explosion. I've seen it blow the door off the closet and it's even burn houses down. So you want to make sure you have plenty of combustion air, and that's why these doors have louvers on it, so we can get the air through the closet to this furnace to, to burn. And the bottom door here, this one's completely sealed. If we take this door off, we're going to have our door safety switch. When I take this door off, it immediately cuts power to the entire furnace. That's for a few very important reasons. Number one is, if you take this door off and this unit's running, this blower could be pulling combustion air, combustion gases out of the heat exchanger and into the house where it could poison the customers. You don't want to poison your customers. That's a very bad day. Also to make sure if the customer is changing filters, some people install the filters inside the furnace. They're having to take these doors off. The customer doesn't uh, understand that. They take this off. They get their hands up in there and get shocked or get their fingers hung up in that blower housing. That's a very bad day as well. So by having that external filter, we eliminate most of that. And we also make sure that we're keeping everybody safe. On that, with this door safety switch, also called a door interlock, you always want to replace it if it breaks. This particular one right here is busted. It's cracked. It doesn't push in anymore. This needs to be replaced. I've seen people temporarily bypass them until they can get the part in, and that's acceptable. The problem is so many people will bypass them and leave them there. Now the customer goes, gets these doors mixed up, they try to put this door on, 
and they hook it up like so, now it's pulling combustion gases into the house. So that's a very uh, big issue. Also now, if you see, there's this little window right here. And this one's pretty faded because this is an older furnace, but this window allows us to see on this IFC. IFC stands for Integrated Furnace Controller, or it's simply a control board. There's going to be a flashing light on this control board. It's going to be flashing codes. When you get to a furnace, the first thing you want to do is look through this window and check the flashing lights, check the codes. What happens is as soon as you take this door off, this door interlock shuts off the power to the furnace. So it forgets and it erases all the codes that it has. Then you're having to go through and re-diagnose from the beginning. So first step in diagnosing this furnace, check the blinking light. You take this door off and the first component that triggers is our door safety switch. Also, if you need to reset a gas furnace, simply taking the door off allows that to reset. Now, at some point in time, you're going to have to go through the sequence of operation with this gas furnace. So you're going to want to make sure that you in engage this door safety switch so you can force it to work while you're working on it. I recommend not to use tape. Too many people will put tape on it and they'll forget to take the tape off. And you have the same situation. Maybe the door falls off and you end up with a poisoning situation. I use a magnet on a 90 degree piece of metal, put the magnet on it and it holds it. There's several products for sale now that does that exact same thing. So our IFC is really cool. It controls all the process for our heating system. And then behind that we have our blower motor and our blower wheel. Here we have our combination gas valve, our inducer fan motor, and our pressure switch. Now we went through that pretty fast. What we're going to do is we're going to break down and take off all of these components and completely disassemble this gas furnace so you can understand everything that's happening with it.